get started. Officially, we'll open the meeting, and if you would not mind standing for a moment. So at this time, we'll say our pledge, our four-way test, and Dr. Rob is doing our invocation today. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the four-way test is very is very all the service. We will build the better friendships. It will be beneficial to all of us. Dr. Rob. Oh, it's not going on. Oh, the other one. <laughs> Just We're having so much fun with our technology. <laughs> it's not no on. touch screen. We just hit the got it button on this one. It's not a touch screen. You have to do the <laughs> mouse. There. And then this one too. Yeah. You're good there. Fellow Rotarians and guests, yesterday was Juneteenth. On June 19th in 1865, Union General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas to announce that the Civil War had ended, two and a half years after the Civil War had ended. So I guess the travel was not popular or immediate, and there was no internet. And for chatbot, I went out into AI yesterday. It's a scary place to be. Um, that this holiday is created as a day of reflection and remembrance of the struggles and sacrifices for those who fought for freedom and equality. It's also a day to celebrate the rich heritage of our African American colleagues and their many contributions to American society. The meal of the day, this is my prop. I don't want you thinking that I started doing carb loading before the dragon boat. Uh, but the meal of the day is really symbolized by red colored foods. Most likely strawberries, watermelon, strawberry soda, watermelon soda, and a variety of other foods, including red beans. The common theme is red, and red symbolizes strength and perseverance. As we can leave our communal meal, may we persevere in our efforts to address Rotary International's objectives, promoting peace, fighting disease, providing clean water and hygiene, protecting mothers and children, supporting education, and protecting the environment. May we refer to our simple four-way test to keep truth, fairness, and mutual benefit front of mind. May we reaffirm our commitment to high ethics and professionalism in all that we do, so let's give thanks for our individual and collective blessings and move forward with renewed optimism, strength of our convictions, and commitment to service above self. Amen. Thanks, Dr. Rob. I appreciate that. You stole some of my thunder, though, this morning for this afternoon, but that's okay. Well, as we look at June, um, June marks the end of a chapter and the beginning of another in our Rotary Club. A bittersweet time to reflect as we look ahead to 2023-2024 Rotary year. And as we all remember, the object of Rotary is to encourage and foster the idea of service as a basis of worthy enterprise, and in particular, to encourage and foster the development of acquaintance as an opportunity for service. Second, high ethical standards in business and our professions the recognition of worthiness of all useful occupations and the dignifying of each Rotarian's occupation as an opportunity to serve our society. And third, 
the application of the idea of service in each Rotarian's personal, business, and community life. And last, the advantage of international understanding, international goodwill, and international peace through a world of fellowship, of business, and professional persons united in one idea of service. With that being said, I am Linda Farkas, and I'm honored to be the 2023 president of our club. One more meeting to go, folks. <laughs> Not to say that I'm anxious. Thank you for joining us today and also um, online, and uh, most importantly, here in person. So it's always great to have everybody gathered together. Uh, at this time, um, Connor, unfortunately, Connor had um, a situation came up and he had to regret not being here today. So, Dr. Doug, would you mind doing happy dollars for me, please, today? And also, I guess we should introduce our guests, right? If we have the magic list, is that one? Is one on? I don't know. Your guess is good as mine. I don't know. I think it's on. Oh, there you go. The magic touch. So we have Sue and Andrew Grant. I want to say hello to everyone. Say hello to the friends out in TV land. <laughs> wow. Well, this is Sue and I, and I we've been in Akron for about 50 years. Uh, we're very happy to put on our first regular performance. And um, <laughs> you can hear me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're from the TV land, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to taking part in Rotary Guided by the Four HS Lectures for the Scott Lightning Center. Oh, I'm just going to do that. Oh, where'd you go? <laughs> and, I believe, and I believe we have a visiting Rotarian. Would you like to introduce yourself and your district? Hi, my name is Michelle Charles. I am the current district governor for 6650. Uh, my home club is Canton. I'm happy to be here today. And I work at the Summit FM with Will. And, and she also lives in Summit County. So, I do. so, so her, her home club currently is Canton. <laughs> Did I miss any guests or visiting Rotarians? Now we have happy dollars. Hugh was waving at me. I'm very happy to see uh, our new members here. They used to be neighbors of mine on Overwood Road. We went to St. Paul's Church together so it's happy to see them and glad they're going to be the members sharing our wonderful things we have with our club. Thank you. Who else? Happy, happy. Susan? Dr. Susan is here. Sorry. Um, yeah, well, we're happy that Manny is back on the North American continent. Yeah. And so we have um, a returning from South Korea, Korea. Uh, our exchange student. And um, I'm also happy because I was able to participate yesterday in the um, Juneteenth. And I walked up to the um, the statue to um, John Brown. What was there? It was exciting. So uh, we had that down. And um, yeah, there was some other something else. But anyway, I'll put it. I'll continue to happy dollars here. And that's about it. I remember what else I left off. Thanks, Susan. We're, we're available for uh, mulligans at the end of the meeting. <laughs> well, hello. Good 
There you go. I have two happy dollars. Hi, everybody. Uh, it is camp. This is our third week of camp. We have adults at camp this week, and oh my gosh, they are so happy to be there. Uh, they were excited. They were playing bingo last night, so they were very excited. They swam during the day, boat rides, all that. So with that said, uh, on your tables, and we've been announcing there are Thursday night evening cookouts at camp, so we hope that you can come out and join us for the evening. Uh, get to see our campers, get to see our counselors. Bring a guest. Oh, please bring a guest. Bring someone and introduce them to camp so they can see our wonderful camp that's uh, the main project of our Rotary Club. So, and if you can't make a Thursday night, let me know. Just come during the week. That would be great. And then the last Saturday, and just a little advance notice, the last Saturday in August, I believe it is the 26th, thank you, Doug, is our uh, annual cornhole tournament. So Doug's on the committee, Scott Culligan is our Rotarian is chairing it. So keep that in mind because it's a, it's a fun day. It's a great way to help raise money for camp and send kids to camp. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. Who's next? Dr. Rob. Thanks, Dr. Doug. I have two happy dollars. One is to meet this couple that has such a charming way with English. <laughs> I, I think our club's going to get smarter. At least we'll sound smarter if you can teach us how to do that. And my, to my second happy, happy dollar is to be sitting here next to Captain Brian as we start to build our Dragon Boat, which will be, Dragon Boat team will be competing in August 12th. So any of you who uh, have, have an interest and in, uh, maybe a, a strong core, or you want to work on your strong core, please sign up and talk to our captain. I have some happy dollars this week in honor of a camper that has been at the Rotary Camp this summer, my friend Grady. I'm sure you know Grady. He's there for six weeks, but I spoke with his mom on Saturday. I happened to bump into her in Portage Lakes, and she was so grateful for the scholarship program that is available at camp for campers because it allowed Grady to go to camp for six weeks this year, which is something he's not, it's been tough for the family to pull off in the past. So a big shout out to the scholarship program at camp. Please think about that when you support camp, but that is where the money goes. And these are real families that we interact with on a daily basis that are taking advantage of that opportunity. So big shout out there. And then also shout out to Michelle, who is our new development director at the summit. And she's also the district governor, one of the district governors here for Rotary. And yeah, just happy to be here. So happy to be here. Thanks, Laura. Susan was, has remembered and brought extra money. <laughs> Yes, so uh, this weekend was the uh, Dragon Boat competition in Buffalo, New York, and our Dragon Boat placed first wow. and second yeah. Yeah. and won the Breast Cancer Survivor competition and first and second in the women's competition. So we like to know. Good deal. All right. It was a great celebration. Excellent. Really good news. Anyone else? I threw in a couple of happy dollars. Uh, Mella mentioned cornhole. We'll start having some flyers probably next week, so you can find out about signing up for cornhole and sponsoring that. And my second happy dollar is after an hour and a half, I got my computer to finish doing its updates just in time to leave to come to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good deal. I had computer nightmare this morning so just a, a couple of reminders um, next Thursday no next Wednesday the 28th is our service project at the Acre Camp and Food Bank uh, 4.30 to 6.30 I know David Hall uh, put out an email uh, asking people to sign up so and we usually do um, a little attitude adjustment following at a local um, establishment so all are welcome and again it's next wednesday the 28th 4 30 to 6 30. Uh, david miller's not here um, and i think we had to put uh, help me board members 
our night out at Canal Park on hold, correct? Yes, okay. Um, we needed X number of um, members to sign up. Uh, Andrew, it's so good to have you and, and Sue here. So um, Andrew, as you heard, is our new newest member um, and I'll officially be inducted um, on the 11th of July. So um, I think it's it's nice to have him on board a little early. So we're, we're happy about that. And Marissa is um, another one of our wonderful new Rotarians, and she will also be inducted um, on the 11th of July. Thanks, Mella, for your updates about camp. It's always good to hear. Um, Brian, I guess I should now refer to you as Captain Brian. So I will certainly do that. Uh, our dragon, um, Dragons on the Lake Festival, and it's a fun time, and I know Dr. Rob um, alluded to that. So um, it's a great workout, and it's a fun day uh, out at Portage Lakes, so it's, it's good. Um, on your table, my dear friends and colleagues, um, is this little flyer, and it's an SOS about paying your dues. If you haven't paid, would you please do so ASAP? and check with any of your friends or any people that you may have sponsored um, over this past year. Um, we have to have um, our payment in by not no later than next week or Rotary International, they'll come after us. So, so please, please um, talk to your, your friends and um, remind them. Um, Katie's not here, and she always mentions our banner um, exchange, which is July 8th. And um, we'll say farewell to District Governor David Jones and welcome our own um, Julie Brando as incoming governor. So David will be here with us next uh, Tuesday um, as one of his uh, final meetings for District 6630. So please make certain that you're in attendance because we want to be able to bid him a, a fun farewell and a thank you for his efforts this past year. Also on your table, don't forget, a lot of you have turned in. Um, I took two big bags to Brighton last, um, last week and they were so excited. So um, Akron Rotary Club is getting recognized out at Summit Mall at the Brighton store. So if you have shoes soles for the souls please uh please bring them so we'll continue through um through next week and then also um Thane is not here today but we have the um, golf outing on saturday july 15th so it's rotary day um at the tournament so that is saturday july 15th don't forget and Stu is online and um, he's our proponent for polio. And he, there's a wonderful baseball game to end polio now, August 17th. And whoa, it's Detroit Tigers against the Cleveland Guardians. So that is um, August 17th. And I know that um, Stu will hopefully be here next week with some of his flyers. So any other announcements? Yes. Question on the baseball game. Yes. Um, I, I had the flyer, but I can't find it. And it's, um, should I contact Ben Stu directly to get tickets? Yes. It, it's online also, Linda. Oh. It's online for the polio night. Okay. It, right. It's online on our website as well as the district website. You can download it there. All right, and I'm not that familiar with how the lower box and the upper box is. Has anybody been in them to know whether it's, it's probably well worth the $10 to do the lower box? Yes. Okay. Having been there <laughs> many years, the lower box is the way to go. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. You're, you're definitely in, in the game. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great, it's a great day. So uh, any other questions or announcements? Okay. Um, Dr. Kiefer? It's yours. Thank you, 
Our speaker today is Jared Hartson. Jared has served as the Executive Director of the Ohio Alliance for Arts Education since September 2019. Prior to that position, he was the Executive and Artistic Director of Tuesday Musical Association in Akron. He has community, coordinated community arts and education programs and worked to establish partnerships with schools and other arts and community organizations all around the state of Ohio. A Wooster native and graduate of the College of Wooster, Jared has worked as a not-for-profit arts manager and arts educator at both the local community and statewide levels. He has worked at Wayne Center for the Arts in Wooster, the Delaware County Cultural Arts Center in Delaware, Ohio, and served as co-executive director of VSA Arts of Ohio in Columbus. Jared has participated in several education programs of the John F. Kennedy Center, Center for the Performing Arts. He was a 2008 fellow in the Kennedy Center's Arts Management Institute, where he studied with Kennedy Center President Michael Kaiser. So Jared, we'd like to hear about the Ohio Alliance for Arts Education. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's great to see you all here, and it's always great to be back at home in Akron. Um, as Dr. Kiefer mentioned, I worked at Tuesday Musical for about, um, not, not do what we wanted. Maybe we'll have a slideshow. I got it. Perfect. Okay. So I was at Tuesday Musical for about, and this is feeding back, um, about six years. And so I'm looking around the room and I see friends, including Virginia, um, who is one of Akron's um, outright best art supporters. So it's great, great to see her. And Dr. McGregor, I think we've been Facebook friends since the Leadership Akron ex uh, program a decade ago. So anyhow, um, yes, as, as my bio said, I, I'm now the director of the Ohio Alliance for Arts Education. Um, the Ohio Alliance for Arts Education is a statewide arts education advocacy organization. So our mission is to make sure that the arts and arts education are part of the, are an integral part of the education of every Ohio one. So we do that through um, also connecting, advocating, connecting, and convening. So those are the tenets in our new strategic plan. Um, in that, we have some pretty core um, values. Of course, that every student um, in public education, private education, wherever that may be, has the right to high quality arts education. That those programs in their schools should be taught by licensed arts educators. Um, so a music teacher has music education licensure, a visual art teacher has visual art licensure, et cetera. Um, and of course, that um, arts organizations play a uh, pivotal role in arts education. So those are our orchestras, our uh, you know, our, our chamber of music ensembles, our museums, all of our community organizations um, can, can support and bolster um, arts education in our schools. And um, also, of course, that um, teaching artists, and I'll talk a little about teaching artists a little bit more, um, also play a really important role in, um, in arts education. So at the Alliance, we work with two major partners um, on a daily basis, the first of which is the Ohio Arts Council. Um, the Ohio Arts Council is our state agency um, that funds arts organizations through grants. So every organization you know of in, in, in Ohio, probably arts organization, every orchestra, every has written to the Arts Council for grant funding. So we help them with a lot of their advocacy work, uh, budget work, uh, things like that, as well as partner with several programs that we'll show you that support arts education. Of course, we also work with the Ohio Department of Education um, and their arts education staff at the Department of Education. So we pay, play the pivotal role that those two organizations as state agencies aren't allowed to ask for anything. They can't advocate for the legislature. They can't testify to the, uh, you know, to the legislature, any of those things. We can't. So we get, we get to sort of play their voice and, and be their big supporters. Um, so, um, one important project that we do with the Ohio Arts Council and several of our statewide peers, and so this is a resource, is the Ohio Teaching Artists Roster. So I mentioned that. The Ohio Teaching Artists Roster is a partnership with uh, Ohio Dance, which is our statewide dance education organization. 
Art Possible Ohio, which is the arts and disability organization, which is a program of the Kennedy Center. It was um, way back in the days, very special arts, started by Gene Kennedy Smith, still, still doing great work, um, and then the Arts Council. And so what we have done is um, collected, recruited, trained, and continue to offer mentoring and professional development to over 50 artists around, teaching artists around the state that are trained to work with schools and classrooms. So to work with, um, you know, a social studies teacher to use drama to teach social studies, or a math teacher can use a dancer, a dance educator to teach math concepts. So, we, you know, we're, we're, we're completely in, um, believe that arts integration, which is when one subject helps teach another, is important. So these artists are on this roster. We, we support them. Um, they are available to schools. So if you have any education colleagues, I'm going to go through a couple of shared resources here with the Arts Council. But um, anytime you have anyone thinking, an arts, education, an arts educator thinking about uh, wanting to, to bolster learning in their classrooms, you should suggest they think of having a teaching artist in their school. Now, how would they have a teaching artist in their school? Because the Arts Council has a great program called Teach Arts Ohio, which is a grant program for schools to apply to the Arts Council to bring those teaching artists into the school for long-term sustained residencies. So not just a one week, you know, a visual artist comes in and they make a mural and it's, you know, the students had a great time and they learned about the mural making process, but ongoing formative in-depth curriculum related um, work. So um, the school can apply to that and actually it pays the teaching artist the, the daily rate of a, of, a, of, a, of a teacher, which is now I think $350. And it can be almost for an entire school year if a school wishes that. Um, one more important um, program at the um, Arts Council, just to throw out in, in terms of funding, is um, the Arts Partnership Program. And that allows organizations like the Canton Symphony, I'm calling my friend Michelle out, even though she's, she's, she's moved on to the summit, we're excited about that. But they can apply to the Arts Council um, to um, do partnership work with schools. So again, it lets professional musicians go in and work with an orchestra program or a visual artist work in a classroom, um, all bolstering and supporting what students are learning in their, you know, in their prescribed academic content areas. Um, when I talked about convening, we work with all of our state or connecting, actually connecting and convening, we work with all of our state professional organizations. So every tenant of arts education has a professional organization. So the, all of the music teachers are part of the Ohio Music Education Association. I'm going to spell the words out rather than all the, we are talking about an acronym, so or, or, you know, the abbreviations earlier. Um, of course, we talked about the Arts Council, Ohio Dance, um, the, um, the art teachers of the Ohio Arts Education Association, and um, the Ohio Theater Education Association. Um, during the pandemic, we, of course, all learned a lot. We also overcame a lot of challenges. And so one of the important things that collective group of organizations in the Alliance were able to do was provide on-demand needed professional development for teachers uh, as they went to hybrid settings or completely remote, or some schools never went to being remote at all. You had a group of teachers, lots of teachers who were trying to figure out how to do things the first time ever, right? So you're a choir teacher and suddenly you're trying to figure out how to teach choir and where students come together and sing when they can't come together and sing. Or even if you're starting to going back into some sort of an in-person, if you can't sing because you're worried about spraying aerosol droplets filled with COVID bacteria. So, uh, not bacteria, any virus. So we, we, we worked um, weekly with arts educators, providing them opportunities to learn how to use technology to deliver lessons, to share what was working in their districts or their classrooms with other teachers. And we keep that going. So some of the programs for that, obviously, are the, the Building Bridges for Arts Education. We do that with the Department of Education and all of these peers. Um, we, had a, we even had a, um, we had a, the, the Blurred Borders, we, we brought arts educators from multiple states together to, um, to same thing, share what was working in Tennessee. Maybe we have something in Ohio that, you know, was working better for them and they had something better for us. Um, so that, that really is the, the convening part, but we have so many great um, 
arts educators in Ohio. One other thing that we convene at the Alliance is the collection of all of the Kennedy Center education teams in Ohio. So we're fortunate to have um, three partners in education teams. So the, the, the John F. Kennedy Center, of course, is the nation's performing arts center in Washington, D.C. And they have a federal mandate to um, provide networks of arts education around the state or wherever the state, around the country. So one of those is the Partners in Education program. Uh, we have three teams in Ohio, and those teams bring a school district and an arts organization or two or three together to provide professional development opportunities for their teachers, um, rooted in arts integration again. So teaching those teachers how to use an art form to further their other academic content area. Um, we have one in Worcester, we have one in Mansfield, and we have one in Springfield. And we're really fortunate we have a smart site, which is the second national um, network of the Kennedy Center, which is a community-wide collaboration bringing systemic arts education programs to students. And that's in Warren and Youngstown. So um, we at the Alliance convene those teams every year to do a major um, arts integration a professional development seminar and we bring the teaching artists along with that too so that's happening in august we'll be in springfield for two days um, but all of those teaching artists and any educator are welcome to come and learn all of those useful strategies um, something i'm excited to share that works even right here in akron is a major program called the arts education data project so again we manage this with the arts council of the department of education and the um, there's a there's a quantum research is a is a um, is a is a researching organization out of uh, New Jersey that puts the work together. But what it is is we're part of the National Arts Education Data Project. So every school in the state has to submit to the Department of Education data on students. It's the EMIS system, the Educational Management Information System. Mm -hmm. We'll remember that. Um, anyhow, it has data on student enrollment, the courses they're taking, the teachers that are, that are teaching it, um, all of those things, and it goes into a big statewide database um, where people from every discipline can use it. So this is a screenshot of the home page of the National or of the Ohio Arts Education Data Project. It's the you can get to this um, when we send the PowerPoint out, of course, but it's on our website at the Alliance. It's on the Arts Council website. It's on the Department of Education website. But you can just see this is these are the, the thing that the, the topics that you can search by course titles, enrollment history, all those things. Um, so here's a snapshot. This is just the overview of the entire state. So you can see, for example, we have one thousand six hundred and eighteen thousand and some students enrolled in school in Ohio, 1,000, or 1 million, sorry, 257, 717 of them are enrolled in arts classes, or 77%. So 77% sounds good as long as you live in the 77% school district or, or, or community, right? If you're not, then, then you're, you, know, you have students who don't have access. You can see the percentage, you know, 63% of students, only so many things you can see on this, but you can see that 63% of students are enrolled in music, 66% are in art. Then of course we get to dance and drama, which is always tough, even though in Akron we have the Firestone School for the Arts with a great dance program. Um, you can see the trends um, that enrollment is much higher in elementary schools, that it drops down, of course, as students get more engaged in high school. You can, of course, um, in the middle section, you even see there's the, the free and reduced lunches there. Interesting phenomenon in Ohio in particular, our, our participation in the arts increases as the percentage of free and reduced lunch um, increases. So I think that shows the students that are uh, participating in the arts in their schools because it's how it, it's available to them versus uh, you know having the resources to, to, to purchase those arts education, arts experiences. Yeah. Um, outside of the classroom. One more sh show or screenshot I'm just going to show you. This is Summit County right now. Um, so it can drill down all the way to a school. So I, I, I kept this topical enough because I didn't want us to start saying, oh, well, Akron Public Schools has this, but you know, you go to this district, but that's exactly what you can do with it. So in all of Summit County right now, though, you can see this is a trend over time. So this is from 2016 to now. So the important thing you unfortunately can see here is the impact COVID has had on participation in the arts 
And um, you know, as we get this is the as we get the 2022 and as soon you know the 2023 data, hopefully we'll see this stuff tick up. But you can see what the the general participation level is. Um, so you know, in this room, talking about what how this is useful, there's so many impacts, right? So if you're a parent and you're moving to the community and you want to make sure your children can go to a school with a great arts program, you can look all the way down to a building level. If you're weighing buying a house between community A and community B, same question, right? You want to make sure there are strong arts programs for your student. If you're that realtor, you might be able to, you know, convince people to buy a house somewhere um, for those sorts of things. So anyhow, it's just it's, it's an incredibly valuable resource, uh, you know, for community members, of course, educators. You can use it if you're, uh, you know, visiting a, a school board meeting for some. Um, advocacy need and you need to uh, need to you know talk like, about arts um, programming in your schools. Um, you can find all that data and share it with school board members, administrators, etc. Um, our major resource that we do um, nine months of the year, it takes a summer break, so it's off right now, is our weekly newsletter called, called Arts Online, and I encourage you all to sign up for it. In that newsletter, we each week update on policies at the legislation, legislative level that affect arts education. So funding, um, things with um, teacher licensure, the State Board of Education. So if anyone um, has sort of paid attention to what's happening right now, of course, there's this major move in the legislature that the State Board of Education will sort of be replaced by the Department of Education and Workforce Development under the governor. So we have no idea how that'll turn out, but it, a new chancellor of education will be appointed and a chancellor of, ed, of um, workforce development will be appointed. And our current state board of education will um, essentially um, be in charge of teacher licensure and territory transfers and things, which leads us to the next. So anyhow, it's online. We have this amazing person who reads all of the Senate uh, testimony. She reads the 5,000 page budget bill and distills it down to the 30 pages of information that you need to know when it relates to arts education, arts education funding, uh, you know, anything like that. So really useful. There are resources for students, teachers, all those things there. And um, I'm proud to say that in the last um, four months with some of our rebranding and things, we've made it really digestible now. It used to be this long scrolling document where you'd read about 300, you know, Senate actions. Now you can you can log in, you can sort of get a two minute snapshot of everything that's happening. And if you want to dig deeper, you can. So if there's something that really, you know, if you, you is really interesting. Um, we also, with our advocacy work, send out action alerts. So if you're signed up with us, we let you know when we need your help to um, to support arts education in um, in Ohio. So a couple things, of course, that have just recently happened. Um, talking about the Arts Council again, it's the biennium budget time. So every two years, the state puts <laughs> together its big biennium budget, and the Arts Council drives all of the funding that then they grant out to all of the arts organizations. Uh, to the to the Arts Council. So uh, this particular year, the Arts Council has done an amazing job of bringing in new grantees. So there were 250 new organizations that were eligible to go into the sustainability system, which is operating support for arts organizations. Well, of course, if they didn't get more money, what would that mean to all the other people that were already in there? They would take a cut. So um, there was an ask for you know an additional $10 million to fund all of that. And um, when the budgets, when the governor's budget came out, it wasn't there. When the house's budget came out, it wasn't there. So we started sending action alerts, asking everyone we knew, especially in uh, Stark County with Scott Olschlager, to call and nag and push and tell them how important the $10 million was. It worked. It's in the house budget. The Senate just passed it last week with that in. So they have to do a little caucusing, but it's a perfect example of how advocacy will have a profound effect on every arts organization in Ohio in the next two years. Um, same thing, we talk about the, um, you know, the transitions with the um, State Board of Education and things like that. We submit testimony or testify if we need to. So all of those things. But if you sign up for those action alerts, we make it really easy where you can put your address in and click and it tells you who your elected officials are and you can almost you know, click the message you want to send and essentially say arts funding is important, arts education is important to our schools, whatever you know, the current need may be. 
Um, so just a little wrap up because I probably am babbling way too long. Um, you know, some of our major, you know, all available to you are the Arts Online newsletter, the Action Alerts. Um, our, our website has a huge array of advocacy materials. Again, questions for a school board, um, if they're electing or, or, or a superintendent candidate or a school board, anything like that, you know, as you're trying to advocate for arts or arts education in your school. Um, I was going to say, um, and then of course, what can you do? You can subscribe to Arts Online. You can take action on the action alerts we send them, write letters, and emails, and post on social media um, for arts teachers, advocates, and legislators. Um, practice and share talking points that, that we share, of course, um, and attend arts programming in your community and beyond. That's the most important thing. Every arts organization depends on your engagement. Of course, you know, your ticket support and things, but just really sharing and building that, that collective arts um, network. Um, this is a little bit topical, but preparing for your work. I think everyone in this room is a demonstrated um, advocate orator and supporter. So you know how to um, make your case and do all of those great things. Um, with that, I'll happily take any questions um, that anyone might have. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. So anyway, I have a sister who's a retired art teacher and had as many as 500 students at, at top grade, so um, yes, but we work is essential. I wanted to know in the data that you presented, uh, if all of that is public education or if that includes um, you know, charter schools and private education, and um, you know, if so, you know, what is the percentage of, of Ohio's children who are receiving, you know, education it's a great question and and actually at the moment there's a filter that's about to be added to the dashboard to filter out the charters but when you see those that that percentage of students that don't have access to arts education the shocking majority are those students in those charter schools so um, yeah our public schools especially in the in the in the in the elementary level generally do a really good job and you actually can filter on there a no arts and you can see every school in Ohio that doesn't have arts education programming available um, but generally you know at least elementary music um, you know instrumental music at the it, it but when it really gets interesting is when you get to the high school levels and you have district a that really has like art one and art b or art two and then this district has 2d design and 3d design and sculpture and media and you know that's where where the inequity often comes and of course we know that happens with our districts you know at different funding levels so if you're you know rural and economically disadvantaged you have less offerings than if you're in a you know well-funded great community thank you of course Anything else? next question well, since I've got the mic, I off that one. I, I'm a recovering business professor, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of an art philistine. Um, uh, I view art a little bit differently as, in addition to going to see art, environmental art, or public art. Do, does your organization advocate for, in addition to education in the schools, just getting people used to seeing art wherever they go, hearing art wherever they go? Definitely. Again, and especially that work advocating for the Arts Council, um, you know, that that that's making sure that the arts are available in every, you know, all 88 counties all around the state, um, every discipline you can imagine, individual artists, you know, through the Community Arts Center all the way to the to the to the big major orchestras and museums. So, um, yes, we definitely support that in, in every way we can, primarily for asking for financial support. but. My art, my arts professional friends will second how important that is. <laughs> Anyone else? Jerry, is it up to the individual schools and school systems to designate the money that's available? In other words, you know, you can pass a tax levy that's used for education, but push comes to shove, is the school going to fund the math program for the arts program? Yes, but 
But there, um, in, on our website, you'll find this, that's a document called the Rule and Law of Arts Education. So there is a graduation requirement for the arts in Ohio. Every seat, graduating senior has to have had one credit in arts education. Now, are they constantly trying to chip away in some way by saying, oh, well, maybe they should take financial literacy or what's the, the newest one has been, um, technology, um, computer literacy, something like that. Um, but ultimately, we help districts all the time when they try to make that cut, because we can go back and say, you know, there's supposed to be an approved course of study in the district. That the, it's all very much local control, as you say, and that's been the that's been the state board of education's tenant for a long time. That a, that a superintendent and a board of education should be able to make those decisions. But there are some core base requirements that they're supposed to have, and if they're not meeting them then that's where the advocacy side could kick back in. So we've had teachers, literally teachers in the district, when they've cut an elementary arts program or something, um, go back to the district and, and, and use our resources and say, you're not in compliance with the law. We're supposed to have licensed arts educators teaching visual arts classes in this, you know, in K-6, and, and they brought them back. So it's always, that's the point. It's a never ending um, advocacy mission fight, you know, push to keep things going. Too often it seems a luxury or a, a do it if we have extra money instead of making your primary focus. Yeah, exactly. Well, and you'll even see, I mean, our, sort of our new slogan, we borrowed from a, a, a long time um, philanthropist that we knew the arts are not a luxury. They are not, we know that. I mean, back to arts education, we know that students that participate, and I didn't bore you with, you know, somebody, Daniel Pink study or something, but, you know, we know that students that participate in, in the arts are collaborative, creative, problem solving, critical thinkers, you know, they're, they're the people, they're more, they're, they're you know, fantastically more, um, you know, prepared to enter and graduate from college, and they become the employees and the colleagues and the friends that we all want to have um, in our communities. You mentioned that uh, there seems to be an absence of art education in many charter schools. Do these legal requirements of a curriculum in the arts apply to charter schools or are they exempt from that? They're pretty exempt. Yeah, the charter school, and, and, and that's another issue that's happening right now in the legislature is the backpack bill is really posed to direct so much money away from public education the, the parents you know the, the legislators legislatures saying that the parents have the right for their kids to go to a school that's better than the one in their community well no we should be making sure the school in their community is good but it's yeah tough sarah thank you so much um i'd like to present our rotary imagine coin and there's a lot of work that we all need to do, but you have given us the imagination to carry on. Thank you. One more test for you. Yeah, one more test. <laughs> 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 Oh, Dr. Rao, congratulations. And all the white cards right up here, if anyone wants them, take them to, you know, take them to the And Jerry, I want to personally say thank you as a public education gifted teacher. Uh, I know very well that art and music are sometimes two avenues that for gifted children and also special needs children that may be the only way that they could communicate. Um, and autistic kiddos um, and nonverbal. So the arts are extremely important. And I'm pleased to say Akron Public Schools um, does a, a good job of supporting their art, arts uh, and their art teachers, uh, at least at the buildings I, I was assigned to. So thank you. And thank you for being an advocate. So it's greatly appreciated. <laughs> Um, Dan Reynolds is here. Dan, do you want to pop up and say anything about camp or any highlights real quick? It's uh, week three, I think, of camp, and uh, it's a one of our adult weeks, so I always, they're a lot of fun having the adults on camp because 
slow down our pace a little bit. And all the adults, for, for a lot of them were my kids when I was a counselor, so uh, there's some faces that you might remember even more of. <laughs> but uh, uh, camp is running well, and we hope to see you Thursday nights. Good, thanks, Dan. Uh, next week, uh, we'll have a celebration of our Rotary Year 22-23. Um, and we will also at that time recognize our three foundation grant recipients and the Rotary Camp, uh, the I Promise uh, Coalition, uh, what, collaboration um, was uh, awarded um, $6,200. And then um, Open M, uh, another one of our grant uh, recipients, uh, was forty four thousand six hundred four thousand six hundred fifty dollars, and the well uh, is also another recipient, and that was four thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. So those folks will be here next Tuesday to receive um, a check um, from our Rotary Foundation, and I certainly hope that everyone will be here. Also, uh, we'll do recognition of Roger Reed for 50 years of active um, Rotary service. And um, we also want to say thank you to, as I said, to our outgoing district governor, David Jones. So um, please make certain that you, uh, you come, bring guests next week as we say uh, farewell to 22-23 and welcome Tom Knauer's new year of 23-24. So any other announcements real quick? If not, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Have a great day.